Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host Jennifer Zheng. Today, I will talk about three topics: the mysterious stratospheric force, the fifth force of the CCP army, and its three goals. The mindset of the CCP behind the Chinese spy balloon incident, and an ironic event in New York, which may give us an idea why the CCP can be so rampant. The content is exclusive for, to me, so please stay until the end. Yuan Hongbin, former law professor from Peking University, revealed that the CCP has set up a mysterious stratospheric force, a military-grade unit with three strategic objectives. The, its headquarters is located in Hainan province in China, and the Chinese spy balloons that have Invaded the U.S. and Canada belong to this force. In an interview with a Chinese language media outlet called Vision Times or Secret China, Yuan Hongbin said that the strategic force had already obtained the ability to get thousands of these balloons into air in a very short period of time at a very low cost to achieve military goals. Yuan Hongbin said about four years ago, a large airship fleet had already been established inside the CCP army. It is called Stratospheric Force, and it is the fifth army force. It doesn't belong to the CCP's other four forces, including land, sea, air, and space force. It is the fifth force. Its rank in the army is set as a military level unit, and its operational range is within the stratosphere of of the Earth, with a range of twenty thousand to forty thousand meters, or sixty five thousand to one hundred and thirty one thousand feet. The goals of the stratosphere fleet in combat are many as follows: one, the airships and balloons that can hover in the stratosphere on a long-term basis can monitor all land and sea areas globally when necessary. Two, to carry out regular and special monitoring of key countries, especially those with potential strategic threats. The third mission of this fleet is to ensure full-time, large-scale, and uninterrupted stratosphere airship monitoring in the relevant combat waters in the Taiwan Strait after the CCP wages war against Taiwan. It will need to provide information guidance and position assurance for the CCP's long-range missile strike. Missile strikes and thereby achieving the goal of regional denial of intervention, which means stopping international troops from participating in the war. Yuan Hongbin further revealed, according to his source inside the CCP, the intrusion of Chinese spy balloons this time was just a predetermined operation of the CCP's stratospheric troops. Why did the balloons fly to the CCP to spy? It was just a pre-planned operation, as they categorized the U.S. as a key country with potential strategic threats. The target of this operation was to conduct surveillance and monitoring in North America, South America, and the South Pacific. According to Yuan Hongbin's source, within the CCP, four airships were sent this time: one to the U.S. via Canada, one to the South American region, and two others flew across the Philippines and Indonesia, and then headed to the South Pacific region. After the one sent to the U.S. was discovered and shot down, the CCP activated the self-destructive device on the two airships in the South Pacific region to destroy the evidence. Yuan Hongbin said the CCP military now already has the ability to make thousands of such airships 
take off in a very short period of time. He said, if all of them are in the air and you use a few thousand ground to air missiles to shut them down, then what if the CCP launches its missiles at this stage? Yuan Hongbin said Canada once sent fighter jets up, but the balloon was too high to reach. Later, the air inside the balloon leaked, and then it started to descend. Canada used machine guns from the fighter jets to shoot it, but after firing a few dozen rounds, they were unable to, fire, to bring it down. The CCP's balloons themselves don't have much high tech involved. They just use opti optical instruments and electronic equipment to monitor. These in instruments and equipment do not belong to the category of high tech. However, they have the advantage of exploiting the gray area of the stratosphere. General fighter jets cannot reach such high altitude, so it's impossible to bring them down with a fighter jet. If you use an air-to-ground missile to bring them down, that is not cost-effective. Yuan Hongbin said CCP's balloon costs only a few hundred thousand dollars. Even a hovering balloon only costs a hundred thousand. A missile capable of reaching such a high altitude, an air-to-ground missile, co would cost millions or even tens of millions. So the cost is incomparable, and this is a new tactic created by the CCP Army. Yuan Hongbin said in terms of the third goal of the stratosphere fleet, which is to use hundreds or even thousands of airships to carry out all weather and no data angle monitoring of the entire operational air and sea areas during the Taiwan Strait War to ensure the accuracy of the CCP's intermediate and long-range missile strikes. Yuan Hongbin said he believes that the U.S. military may not have come up with a truly effective response plan for dealing with this mode of the CCP's operation so far, as this area is precisely one that is neglected in the military field by many countries. That's why the stratosphere force was created by the CCP when it researched how to engage in asymmetrical warfare against the U.S. Yuan Hongbin said until now, the U.S. still doesn't know the existence of such a force. Americans only say that the CCP may have been preparing for a long time to monitor the five continents, but the U.S. doesn't know the three operational goals of the strat stratospheric force, and it doesn't even know that it is a military-level unit. In other words, we should expose the CCP's stratospheric force so that people can pay attention to this new warfare tactic from the CCP. Well, the above is what Yuan Hongbin revealed exclusively in his recent interview with the Vision Times. Since we talked about the Chinese spy balloons last time, three more so-called unidentified flying objects were shot down in U.S. and Canada. In the meantime, the CCP also announced that it also found an unidentified flying object near Rizhao city in Shandong province in China and was ready to shoot it down on February 12th. However, after quite some online buzz, there are no further reports about whether that unidentified flying object was shot down and to whom that unidentified flying object be belonged. Obviously, it was just another fake news report created by the CCP. 
Last time I talked about five possibilities that the CCP would release the, the spy balloons at such a sensitive time, just before U.S. Secretary Blinken was going to visit China. One of the possibilities was that the balloons were released by Xi Jinping's political enemy within the CCP. Well, it seems that this is the story that the White House, White House got from the CCP. Xi Jinping didn't know about the balloon. My point is, it actually doesn't matter whether Xi Jinping knew this specific matter or not. The balloons were made and sent here already, as well as to many other countries. It was part of the CCP's long-term military program to dominate the world. So this view was confirmed by Yuan Hongbin's expose. While the CCP is still insisting that the balloon was a civilian one, a Chinese article that has been widely reposted in Chinese speaks of the CCP's true mind. The article basically says the balloon incident has set two traps for the U.S. and is a stroke of genius. It is like a great show of playing the U.S. like a fool in front of the world. And the outline of the script of this great show is, one, I come in and you didn't notice. Two, you noticed, but you couldn't hit me. Three, you shot me down, but you fell into my traps. Four, I gave you attacks from both north and south. Were you happily surprised? Attacks from both north and south means that there were balloons in the north and the south of the U.S. The article says, through this incident, everyone saw three basic facts. One, China's unmanned airships can easily penetrate U.S. airspace. Two, the U.S. air defense system is not as solid as imagined. Three, the wandering balloon not only can attack remotely, but also can attack anywhere. And what are the traps set, set up by the balloons? The article says, one, it is set up a trap for future similar events to be handled in an equivalent manner. The author's main point is the CCP suddenly lowered the altitude of the balloon on its own initiative to give the U.S. the opportunity to shoot, to shoot it down. Thus, an opportunity was also created for the CCP. The logic is because this time you shot down my civilian balloon. So next time, for example, when your new House Speaker McCarthy visits Taiwan, we will have an excuse to shoot down his plane as well. The article says, quote, with this card up our sleeve, in the event of a war in the Taiwan Strait in the future, China can also follow suit and intercept all external interferences. Another card is to tell the U.S. that the era of extortion is over and the Chinese will not play along, unquote. The article quoted CCP's foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning's reply about Blinken's visit. Regarding the visit of Secretary Blinken, in fact, neither side has announced any visit, and the release of the news by the U.S. is their own matter. The author said, the implied meaning is, who cares whether he comes or not? No one in China will welcome him. They just have it with one-sided wishful thinking. To, plain, to put it plainly, if you are here to beg for food, you have to know who you are and don't keep thinking about eating a feast without having to pay anything. If you want to beg for food, you get down to, on your knees or you get the hell out. The article ends like this, a grand play with two hidden cards. The airship incident is both a diplomatic masterpiece and a manifestation of the resurgence 
of strong cultural attributes. As the Sino-US game enters deep waters, this proactive sword wielding will gradually become the mainstream operation. The future trend of the world is bound to be red. When the sun rises in the east, the beacon will inevitably be defeated." Unquote. The beacon here obviously refers to the U.S. Well, although a lot of facts used in this article are not true, the mindset is very real. That's why I'm sharing it here. While the CCP lovers are boasting that they fool Americans like playing monkeys, what are some American politicians doing? Let's watch an exclusive video I, op I obtained showing that when the CCP's national anthem was sung in New York City, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, U.S. State Governor Cassie Hogan, U.S. City Mayor Eric Adams were standing together with the CCP's Council John General Huang Ping on the same stage to show support. When New York State Governor spoke, she even waved a CCP flag. Well, this event was organized by a pro-CCP organization called Americans for a Prosperous Chinatown Association on February 12th in Chinatown in New York. The CCP's Council General in New York was the first who gave a speech. Even Xi Jinping was represented by a Winnie the Pooh with a CCP flag in his hand. Watch this. 黄平大使，我们现在发言，Ladies You know, February 12th was the day when the third CCP balloon was shot down. But on the same day, while the American military was still busy dealing with the Chinese spy balloon incident, the CCP was busy organizing people to hand to have their bloody red flags fly on American soil. Watch this. Yeah. 
Maybe many people still regard the CCP's national anthem and bloody red flags as harmless multicultural elements. The CCP regard them as some symbols of sovereignty. That is why, even when they sent rescue workers to Turkey after the terrible earthquake, they still needed to raise their flags first. The rescuers from Hong Kong had to wait for 10 hours to do a flag raising ceremony before they could begin helping. The irony is one of the lines from the CCP's national anthem is brave the enemy's gunfire march on. I wonder who the enemies were in these few CCP officials' minds when they sang brave the enemy's gunfire march on on American soil. Maybe the enemies were no other than the American devils, which is how CCP lovers usually referred to Americans. Were there several prominent U.S. politicians also included as American devils. Maybe only those CCP guys on the stage know. By the way, the one in the middle who has a microphone in his hand is the CCP's Council General in New York, Huang Ping. I think it is high time that we seriously review what kind of role the CCP is playing in the world, how great it threat is and whether we should allow a regime that has killed more than 80 million of its own citizens fly to fly its flags or play its national anthem on our own land. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you are already subscribed, please like and share my content and double check that you are still subscribed. Also, if you could, please go to my website at jenniferzongblog.com. That's jenniferzongblog.com. Sign up for a membership or make a donation to support my truth-telling efforts. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day and see you next time.